Hey, look at you, all grown up and needing car insurance. You don't have to freak out if you got a driving record that's not so hot or worry if you aren't sure exactly what you need. Able Insurance has your back. Pass up the national insurance companies where you're just another number and keep your auto insurance right here in Charlottesville. 979-0814 is the number. Ableinsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? Say one more time. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? I know Tony Bennett. I, you know, I'm a huge Virginia guy. Uh, we'll Evans never win a championship more. with this team, though. I, they can't play <laughs> offense. They, can, you know what it is. Here's the, here's the bottom know. line. Here's the bottom line. There's gonna come a game in the tournament where they need to make a shot and get a shot, and they can't get it. I think there's two guards they have. Listen, Ty I, Jerome and and Kyle Guy. Can both I don't play like. The I think they're level. very defendable. And DeAndre Hunter's a lottery pick. I don't like them really offensively. I don't like them offensively and at all. We'll never win a championship more. with this team, though. And Virginia with the all-time turnaround title. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, do? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Amon Hawkins. I appreciate you for taking time out of your day to listen to the latest episode of the show. First of all, salute to my sponsor, Abra Insurance. Go to abrainsurance.com for all your insurance need, home, auto, business. Holla at Abra Insurance. Check out their offices, their office on Ryle Road. And when you walk up in the building, tell them the Ball Hawk sent you and they'll definitely take care of you. Um, and go to sthujuice.com if you want your Shut the Hell Up Juice apparel. Uh, if you've seen the shirts, uh, Quinn Blandon has worn a shirt. Cow Guy actually wore a Shut the Hell Up Juice shirt uh, post-victory after the Auburn game. So go to sthujuice.com if you want a Shut the Hell Up Juice shirt. Or you could just hit me up directly on Twitter at I am Ballhawk or Instagram at I am Ballhawk. Just message me. Um what you're looking for, and I definitely take care of you. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, haters and supporters, Stephen A. Smiths of the world and you Skip Bayless's of the world, the University of Virginia Cavaliers are your 2019 NCAA Division I national champions in basketball. Yeah, national champions in basketball. You know, it was just a year ago, where many folks questioned, qu- questioned, I'm country, questioned the coaching style of head coach Tony Bennett. They questioned, can the tempo and the pace of the game and being defensive minded win you a national championship? I mean, if you listen to the commentary of halftime with Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith, two NBA analysts on TNT, do a hell of a job on a po- you know the pregame, postgame, midgame, any game show that they have on TNT with Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal. It was amazing to see professional guys really not understanding the pro game. And then you got a guy like Clark Kellogg who's been covering college sports f- for over 20 years. How they argue with him. A guy who's been astute and been studying the University of Virginia all season long because he's been connected directly to college sports. It just amazed me how two NBA guys didn't get it, did not understand, and felt like somebody had to speed the pace up in order to win. You know, Kenny Smith had the analogy, in order to be a champion, you have to basically be comfortable with being uncomfortable, do things that are uncomfortable. And when you look at the winner of this game, the team that started doing things that made them uncomfortable actually lost the game. Texas Tech went out of what they were known to do. The shot selection, turning the ball over, um, the breakdowns on defense because they wanted to trap and 
force Kihei to take bad shots by leaving him open. They listened to the commentary of two professional analysts. And those professional analysts got them in trouble. That's why they analyzed the pro game. And they should remain analyzing the pro game. Because college basketball and NBA basketball, polar opposites. Polar opposites. In the NBA, you want to run and gun. And that's why you see a lot of these media outlets wanted to see the Dukes and the North Carolinas and the Gonzagas. They wanted to see the run and gun style. Izzo is a guy that they let get away with the blue collar defense type of ball because his teams will get out and run, you know. But everybody hated the fact that it was Virginia versus Texas Tech. Oh, the game is going to be so boring. Oh, I don't care about this game. Wham, wham, wham. But when you took the time to look at this game, it was a phenomenal game. If you are a basketball purist, you had to definitely enjoy the chess match, the substitutions, the the changing of the offense from Tony Bennett, from going to block removal, to continuity, to running his version of the triangle. I mean... It was just so many adjustments made mid-game, halftime, late in the second half, overtime, from the matchups to how Texas Tech were going to man-to-man, then using a little hybrid zone and using and, and turning that to a matchup zone. Like, if you're a basketball purist, you should have definitely enjoyed Last night's game. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a UVA fan, but just looking at the game, I appreciated the coaching. I appreciated the players' ability to tap into what has been explained to them in practice and on the sideline and implementing it immediately on the court. Being coachable. Having two coaches who didn't need to scream and get in your face and threaten you and get held back, but truly teach you and comfort you and console you and truly illustrate what you are doing wrong and what you need to be doing to be successful. That's why this game, if you're a basketball purist, you should enjoy what you saw. I've watched the game three times now, and every time I'm just amazed that The high basketball IQ that was on display from both sides. From both sides. Two well-coached teams. Two teams that executed at a high level on both ends of the floor that made it tough for you to score. You had to hit contested shots or you had to make the extra pass or you had to be decisive. If anybody tried to do too much with the basketball, that ball got taken away from you no matter who you were or it got punched out to where it made you reset and be like, okay, Let me not play around with this basketball. When you look at a team like a Texas Tech, right? They got a lottery pick and Jerry Culver. Then you got Virginia projected lottery pick and DeAndre Hunter. It was a matchup of the lottery picks. And damn it, it didn't disappoint. Because our lottery pick and DeAndre Hunter wasn't so good in the first half. But boy, did he show out in the second half. And Culver was just a guy who turned into a volume shooter because... Our defense played that damn good. But Brandon Francis, Brandon Francis coming off the bench for Texas Tech, number one, yeah. Who are you? You are somebody. He had 17 off the bench in 37 minutes, 7 to 12, 3 or 7. But you know how I do. Let me go ahead and give you some game notes before we really break down um, into the box scores and how many points everybody scores. So some notes from the game, courtesy of VirginiaSports.com. Um, Virginia 35 and three claimed its first national championship in men's basketball. UVA extended its school record and wins to 35. Ty Jerome became a 49th member of the Virginia 1000 point club with now 1011 career points. Jerome also had eight assists and that moved into a tie for third on UVA single season assist list with 202 assists. This season, Cal Guy ranks 26 on UVA's career scoring list with 1,323 points. Hunter had his 12th career 20-point game. Guy had his 16th career 20-point game. Cal Guy was named the most outstanding player of the NCAA Final Four. And Hunter and Jerome joined Cal Guy 
on the NCAA Final Four All Tournament team. So those are your notes provided by FajinSports.com. Um, when we jump into the box scores, we we see that um, Virginia won by a score of eighty five to seventy seven. There were seventy two thousand six seventy two thousand and sixty two people in attendance for yesterday's game. I repeat, seventy two thousand sixty two people in attendance for a game that was supposed to be born for a game that none of the nascent, none of the aficionados wanted to see because nobody is sexy. You know, you're just a good looking woman with a brain. You ain't got no body. That's what they basically saying. They want boobs and butts and y'all didn't have it. You just got a nice smile and you're smart and they don't want to see your face. They want to look at everything else and that's what's wrong with them. That's why they was wrong. That's why I do like Stephen A. Smith continue to elevate us with his hate because he did not want to see and he prayed to God that we wouldn't be successful. Well, you know what, Stephen A. Smith, man? Send me your send me your uh, mailing address, man. I got a couple of Shut the Hell Up Juice different version shirts that I want to send you that you may need to wear on the show. I'm going to send you one for each NCAA tournament victory we had. All right? Courtesy of the ball hawk. Straight like that. Free of charge. Somebody tag them and tell them this. I just send it to, to Brist. No, you in New York. First take is in New York now, so I need to get first take address and send you, you know, some shut the hell up juice shuts. Because um, you was doing a little too much praying to the wrong God. On God. Um, when we break down Texas Tech, we talk about Jared Culver, who um, is a projected lottery pick. He played 41 minutes. He took 22 shots to score 15 points. He was 5 of 22. He was 0 for 6 from 3. Five or six from the free throw line. I want to say his first field goal actually came in the second half, um, a short runner or something like that. But he did have nine rebounds, five of them offensive. He had five assists, three turnovers, one block, and two steals. Uh, Davide Morietti from from Italy played 40 minutes. He was three or six from the uh, three point line. He was five or ten from the field. He was a sharpshooter, man. He had 15 points. I remember he stepped on Ty's foot on a little jab step um, and, and got a three up. Uh, Matt Mooney, very solid player also, number 13, uh, 41 minutes played. He was 4-9 from the field, 2 or 6 from 3. He had two. You know, when he hit his threes, they were like daggers. It, it was they, He was basically their Ty Jerome, a nice, savvy, not overly quick, but crafty guard, big body, um, and they were posting him up on Kihei Clark in the first half, showing a wrinkle, um, allowing him to be a playmaker in the lane also if we had to double and help Kihei. Um, he ended up with 10 points. Um, and then I talked about Brandon Francis off the bench in 37 minutes, had 17 points, hit some big shots. Um, he was hot from three early. They got them going. I got them back into the game. Um, then Kyler Edwards off the bench, had 20 played 23 minutes. He was four or five from the field, two for three from three. Uh, two for two from the free throw line, had 12 points. Uh, in, in the first half, Texas Tech shot 33% from the field. They were 8 of 24. They shot 10 free throws. They were 8 of 10. And then the three ball really kept them in the game. They were 5 of 12. They shot 41%. I thought the Wahoos in the first half executed great on defense um, initially. And then we started overcompensating on the pick and roll. And they were doing a good job of going back to the Gardner Web game and kind of understanding what they were doing to us with their pick and roll, kind of flashing and diving hard, causing our weak side guy and the, and the front side wing guy to kind of help out. And they were making an extra pass from the paint or the guard would see that we were sagging heavily and skip passing it to one of the elbows and it was getting – uh, open three so you know that was a testament to them how well they were coached and the IQ of, of a Matt Mooney um, seeing and, and finding guys that were open and um, in the second half they shot 53 percent from the field they were 15 to 28 uh, four of they were just four of 13 from three so it was a little polar opposite they started making they tried to make it shots in the paint and um, you know that's something that we we don't like in the pack line, but again, national championship, two well coached teams. They made adjustments. Uh, they made tough shots. Uh, Culver actually had a good move that kind of gave them a lead. 
um, late in the second half. Uh, but then on the flip side with the Wahoos, when you look at what we did, you know, DeAndre Hunter led the way. He played 44 minutes. He was 8 of 16 from the field, 4 of 5 from 3, hit the big 3 to tie it up and essentially send us to overtime. He was 7 of 9 from the free throw line. Uh, he had nine rebounds as well. He had four offensive and five defensive uh, compared to Culver, who had five offensive and four defensive. Um, only thing about DeAndre had four turnovers and the ball was getting stripped. And he was just mishandling the ball. But he had 27 points. He was very efficient. He picked the spots. Uh, Cal Guy, he played 45 minutes. That's every minute of the game. He was 8 of 15 from the field, 4 of 9 from 3, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, three rebounds. One steal for his 24 points. Cal and Ty Jerome, 16 points, eight assists. He was six of 16 from the field, two of six from three, two of two from the free throw line, six rebounds. Mamdi Diakite, nine points, two blocks, two of four from the field. Attempted one three, didn't make it, and was five of six from the free throw line. Had seven rebounds, three of those rebounds were offensive. Kia Clark played 33 minutes. He was one of two from the field, he shot one three and made that only attempt he had from three. Um, he had two rebounds, one of them offensive, four assists, but he did have two turnovers for his three points. Braxton Key played 29 minutes off the bench, two or five from the field, 0 for 1 from three, two or two from the free throw line. He had 10 rebounds in just 29 minutes played, two big offensive rebounds to go along with eight defensive rebounds, two assists, and one big block to help. Sent us into overtime. Jack Salt played four minutes, didn't attempt a shot, had one rebound, one personal foul, and one turnover. That was on a shot clock violation um, in which his shot got blocked. Then you had Jay Huff played three minutes, attempted one three-pointer, uh, had one personal foul, didn't register a rebound. So when you look at how we shot in the first half, we shot 41% from the field, 45% from three. We attempted 29 shots to their 28 shots. Uh, like I said, the thing that kept them in with three-point shooting, they hit the same amount of threes as we did, but they hit seven. They hit five more free throws than, than we did. They attempted six more. Um, and then the second half, both teams shot well. We shot 52% from the field to that 53%. Uh, we had 25 attempts, 13 makes, and they had 28 attempts on – 15 makes and we shot 41 percent from three that actually kept us in the ball game as far as staying afloat and sending it to overtime was 5 of 12 41 percent 5 of 7 from the free throw line and how many free throws did they shoot in the second half they were 5 of 5 from the free throw line in the second half and um, in overtime we were 2 of 5 from the field 40 percent one for one from three and 12 of 12 from the free throw line they were 4 of 11 from the field. 1 of 5 from 3. So, there you have it. 16 second, ch 16 second chance points. The bird out here, it's a bird right by the window that's all in my ear. Do you want to get on the podcast, bird? And they had 9 second chance points. Um, 11 points off turnovers. We had 10 points off turnovers. We had 11 total turnovers. They had eight turn turnovers. All right, so let's get into what, what else I saw in the game. So here's the biggest thing that I saw in the game as far as the Wahoos. I talked about how they continue to switch the offense depending on what Texas Tech was doing. I always love the fact that when Dre comes out aggressive because Dre actually got to the cut with ease and he missed an easy layup, but he was being aggressive. But what more can you say about a guy like Ty Jerome that always wants to set the tone and set the table? If I'm not mistaken, he had 13 of his – I want to say he had – no, he had eight points in the first half. He had eight points in the first half, eight of his 16 in the first half, I believe. I don't think he had 13 of his 16. I want to say he had eight. And maybe Cal had 13 in the first half. But the fact that DeAndre came out aggressive trying to get to the cup um, show me it was going to be that type of game to where he wasn't going to settle. Don't get me wrong. He he still had times where he would face up and settle for a jump shot, but you could just tell by his body language that he was better to, he was ready to show folks who were doubting if he was ready for the next level and folks were like this is why he needed to stay too passive. It was like he heard us and coach Bennett heard us because coach Bennett really started to 
spotlight DeAndre Hunter and his skill sets by getting letting him get to his spots, whether it was on the low block, whether it was on a high elbow, whether it was on the free throw line extended. We made it a point to give him an entire side of the floor. We either run a two-man game with him. He came off some screens or he would pop out to the elbow on some dribble drives. But when you saw in the second half where he was going nuts, we were featuring. It was let's get the ball to 12. No matter how long it took us to get – it was like we would run through our offense, right? Whether it was the continuity, it may be the block remover. But when it got to like 10 seconds, you could just see that people would just fade to one side of the court. And it was almost – like I told you, like I said in the last podcast with Anthony Schiffler and, and Chad Wood, I want to see DeAndre feature in the same aspect to where the New York Knicks used to do with Carmelo Anthony, where they give him the ball, free throw line extended around 15-foot area, and let him triple threat you, and he could jab you and elevate over you, or he could jab you and go to the cup and finish, or he could jab you and back you down and finish. So it may have not have it may not have been planned. But it was working out that way. It was I felt like I was Negro Domus. Like it was coming to fruition. That when we needed a bucket, we go to twelve. It was times where folks had an issue with Ty taking shots. And if it's late in the clock, Ty gonna take the shot. Now, Texas Tech was doing a great job of switching off of our pin down screens. The big was flashing out to where the cow would have to come all the way up to the hash just to get the ball and we would have to restart our offense yet again because if you ever notice when we come off the pin down screen we come off the elbow with a left or right we usually have a guard that's trailing so Kyle get the ball handed off to him then the other guard is coming right behind him and Texas Tech was doing a great job of pinning us on that sideline they were trapping us so Coach Bennett was like you know what instead of running a pin down screen let's just put DeAndre there get the illusion that the guard is coming that way and now he's just going to reverse pivot and pin this guard on his hip and now we're going to dump it down to him and now if you do pass it out and somebody takes a three he will have position for offensive rebound and the great thing about inserting Braxton Key in for Kihei Clark is that you had another guy that would really crash the boards and if you crash the boards with him he's athletic enough to get back to stop any fast break and our ability to crash boards at, you know, just the perfect time of just tapping the ball out says a lot. I mean, we had 11 offensive rebounds. They had nine. Those 11 offensive rebounds played a dividend. It was just a fun game to watch, man. I just love what the Wahoos did. Um, it was it was just poetic. Everybody embraced their role. Everybody showed their skill set. For as many times as people complain about Tony Bennett and – his rotation. Many times the people complain about having Kihei in with a Jack Salt and a Braxton Key. Like, you just never know what Coach Ben is thinking, but it comes out right. Yes, he could just put in a totally defensive lineup in, but maybe he just wants to stymie and get the other team out of that offensive rhythm. And he may sacrifice the continuity on offense and having the 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 score the the court spread out and making guys have to make contested jumpers, but it's the reason why he's the coach. And he tried to pick certain spots to give a guy like Ty Jerome some rest. Um, and he and he got it. We couldn't afford to keep put Kyle on the bench because Kyle was a guy that they were scared the hell of. They were scared, scared of Kyle. Scared of him. And Kyle showed his full array of moves. He worked out with D1 here in Charlottesville. The step backs... The the two dribble pull-ups, just the elevation he has on the shots, being crafty with his handles, being able to get to the basket and finish with his left hand on the right side of the of the floor. I mean, he showed his whole array of skill, IQ, and wherewithal of who's around him and what spot I need to get to because that's my sweet spot. Like I said, we talk about Ty Jerome all day and his ability to get to the lane and just master the floater. And his ability to make the floater off the glass at a high arc. Baby Snoop Dogg for them uh, who had the ankle injury uh, what was number number 11. I call him Baby Snoop Dogg. My homeboy Kevin Renneker. Tariq Owens who had the ankle injury and rehabbed 
all night long, um, ended up playing 22 minutes and fouled out with just three points. Um, salute to that young man because I know he he busts his tail to play, and that's that's not the way you want to go out. But that's just another testament of our guys not selling, our guys getting to the cup. Now, I haven't been talking. Well, I've been talking for like 22 minutes. I do want to say this for the folks who are here being petty and, and want to continue to talk about the refs and continue to be player haters, as my man Dia Kite would say, huh? Huh? What you got to say now? What's up now? Look, I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all really revealing y'all true character. And a lot of the people who be complaining about referees and complaining about all these things, you guys are actually coaches too. You actually, we 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 entrust that you will sow the seed in the next generation. And you out here on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, talking about somebody got gifted a uh, national championship and um, the referees were paid off. Look at this play. Look at that play. But you'll be the main ones that try to tell your team or your players if they had that same mentality that they just need to hold themselves accountable and control the things that they can control. So you guys need to start practicing what you preach. Because y'all out here being the, the, the leaders of the next generation and you're looking like poor sports. And that's what's not needed right now. A guy like a Tony Bennett, how dare you try to diminish and taint what he accomplished by saying, well, the refs are well, for Virginia. The refs won them the game. That's totally taking away all the hard work, all the vitriol that they took last year for being a number one seed to lose to a 16 seed, and that wasn't their motivation. Their motivation was to just redeem and get back to where they was last year and finish this year. As Ty said, I don't want to talk about UNBC right now. I want to talk about the national championship. So that's my thing to all you folks out here that's complaining. If you are a coach, AAU, Little League, high school, college, and you're screaming about some referees and you on Twitter, you're playing yourself. You look dumb. Because when one of your players do the same thing and you try to have a teaching point and tell them what they need to do, old ball hawk going to allow Petty Hawk to come out and share – all the vitriol and, and backhanded compliments that you're doing right now because it's, it's not a good look, fam. You need to calm down, sit down, hold on, and sit this shut the hell up, Juice. But congratulations to the Wahoos. Congratulations to the coaching staff. Congratulations to Carla Williams and the administrators uh, for all they did. Congratulations to the to the former players who, who created and built this foundation all the way back to the Ralph Sanson and the Jeff Lamps, to the Travis Watson, to Chris Williams, God rest his soul, C-Dub, um, the Roger Masons, the Sean Singletary's, the Bub Evans, the Justin Anderson's, the Joe Harris, the Kills, Malcolm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Adam Halls, Donald Hands, Chesley Watson when I was, you know, the list goes on. Everybody before these young men, they appreciate Everything you did for the program. And they took it to legendary status. And that's what you want. And that's why I was glad that, the, well, as they say, the old heads came back and embraced and celebrated with these young men. You got a lot of old heads that have come back and say, well, they won it because it was easier back when we was playing. No, our old heads came back and was like, become legendary. I always say good is the enemy of great be great today. And then you got to ascend, ascend to the legendary status. Cal Guy, legendary. Ty Jerome, legendary. DeAndre Hunter, legendary. Kihei Clark, legendary. Braxton Key, legendary. Jack Salt, 118 total wins. The winningest player in UVA basketball history, legendary. Jay Huff, legendary. White Mamba, legendary. Everybody on the bench, legendary. Kostra, everybody. Y'all know who y'all are. My fault. Legendary. Lil Nixon, legendary. The whole coaching staff, legendary. The support staff, legendary. Equipment, my man Matt, legendary. Everybody, legendary. If you're part of the program, legendary status. You won a national championship. Congratulations. Definitely proud of everybody that had a hand in it. All the fans, proud of you also for sticking with the crew, believing in the crew, and staying up all night, spending your hard-earned money to travel to Minnesota. 
appreciate you. And I definitely appreciate your support. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do. STHUjuice.com for you to shut the hell up, Juice of Pearl. I will have a special national championship version of my brand, Shut the Hell Up Juice. So be on the lookout for that. Ball Hawk Show, man. And we're going to keep it coming because, hey, spring ball has already started. So keep it locked because now we're going to start having football podcast episodes as well. Oh! Ball Hawk. Yeah, I'm a little horse. I'm out. I want the whole world spin my record. Say roll, the hoodie styles, check game, stay free records. Ho! Show the girl fed the death in a massage. Bad news, even be massaging. I got a fitted head, I be massaging. Pinky rings on my finger, I massaging. I got a speedboat concert, cause I massage. I come and do about a whole kind of large. I be massaging. I be massaged. I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging. Yeah, I post some constantly massaging. I got GPS, I be massaging. I catch croaker fish, cause I'm massaging. I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging. Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging. Straight out the ghetto, cause I'm massaging. I got ice around my neck, cause I'm massaging. Or even gold teeth, I massaging. Or pinky ring iced out, cause I'm massaging. I got a hundred million dollars, I be massaging. I got ten. I be massaging. I got a thousand dollars. I be massaging. I got twenty-two cent and be massaging. I take a penny and be massaging. I tell shorty girl fat. I be massaging. Your big two. I be massaging. I be massaging. I be massaging. I got a GPS stern with massaging. Whole shed road chain be massaging. I got a Uzi. I be massaging. I got a twelve gauge pump. I massage. I got a hundred thousand. I massage. I ain't broke, I be massaging. I stay paid, I be massaging. I stay late, I be massaging. I hit the poop all night cause I'm massaging. She wanna come through loaded and massage. Whole cheese, we massage. Bad new posse constantly massage. Ain't no joke, I be massaging. Even the bacon and eggs, I be massaging. Huh? Polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging. I love you, sweetie cake. Spin my record, let me give you the game On oh, how to get rich Take a penny And flip a penny Then 40 billion Uh-huh, why? I be massaging What? Car stern wheel I be massaging The whole, the whole label Of the state free records In the VA oh! We be massaging Let's have a money shot